Hey guys, so as you can see, it's currently raining and I am house sitting for my buddy Mike. You know, by the time you guys see this video, it's probably going to be like three to six months after hunting season, uh, mostly because I'm really bad at making videos. I'd like to be better at making these videos so that YouTube will then promote my content and I can leave my job and make YouTube videos. That would be fantastic. One of the things I wanted to do today while we have a rainy day is to uh, make by hand with hand tools a quail call for the rest of quail season. As you can see, my tools are currently sitting at Mike's house. I have my grinder here and my bandsaw here, but I'm not gonna use those. I'm going to use pure hand tools. I'm gonna use a power drill, because I brought it. I'm gonna use a powered screwdriver. But outside of that, man, you know, handsaw, sandpaper, a rubber band, a piece of wood, uh, some, a knife to carve a channel in the wood. And you pretty much have everything you need to make a homemade quail call that is capable of calling in California Valley quail and Gamble's quail. But they kind of look the same and they kind of sound the same. I don't even have like my workbench here because my workbench is currently disassembled and standing here at Mike's house. So I'm gonna be working on the ground All right, so I'm not really sure of the origins of this piece of wood, maybe a spear gun build or something. Uh, but I think you can buy this size, half inch by whatever piece, at your local hardware store. I think that's the more interesting side. I'm gonna rip it in half with a handsaw, and it's gonna be crooked. Like that's that's just how we do. I don't know why I decided to do this with hand tools. Maybe I should have just used the bandsaw that's sitting right here. I want to recess these holes so that I can just start sanding it all as one piece. It'll be close. All right, now I'm just gonna hand sand it to shape. 60 grit. All right, now that I have the rough shape, I am going to smooth it out. And we're gonna start with 240. 400. 600. So now that we are Sand it up to 800 and you know, you can go less or more. You can go to 2000 if you want, maybe like super polished. Hey, psst, shut up, Zoe. But uh, that's, that's kind of what you're looking for here. I don't recommend having three dogs and a toddler that needs to nap because they bark all the time and wake them up. It looks like he may go back down. So I can continue until he wakes. What I'm gonna do is mark where I wanna carve the channel. And here, and there's no science to this. I'm just marking it. Because really the tuning that you do is more in the rubber band and the tightness of the rubber band than it is, you know, the shape of this. But you do want a shape that produces a sound. 
that's how wide this channel is going to be. Don't carve towards your fingers. That's a good way to get razor bladed. If you could see, I thought about doing it and then thought better of it because I'm an adult now. Now I can make like a story and say, yeah, it's going to be like the sweetness of the wood that's going to create the sweet sound that's going to sound right. But really, it's just, it's just like tightening the rubber band right. The way you carve this out is somewhat symmetrical should you attempt to do such a silly thing. You can tell that I've done like almost zero work here. And I still hear these stupid dogs barking. And I swear I'm going to punt one. Or at least leave one out in the rain. Just so the other two know that I mean business. Let's test it out. All right. Let's see what kind of cool noises we're going to be making. <laughs> Zoe, I told you. I'm like trying to speed run this just so I can call the quail because I can hear them calling right now. And the idea behind this is that it's a locating call. You know, you call out once and then you hope that something echoes back and you hope that your ears are good enough to discern the location at which things are calling back to you. That's good. I'm going to use some boiled linseed oil. It's super cheap. It adds some color, adds some yellowing to it. This is just a hair Shinier, darker, richer, it has like a golden hue to it. This is where we were. And we're just gonna keep saturating it until it doesn't want to take anymore and that will waterproof this. All right, so we're back. So the last I left you guys with, I had put a coat of linseed oil onto the wood. They're still a little wet, but the idea was to saturate them as much as I could. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this, I'm going to, it's kind of like tuning a guitar. That's really close already, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the actual quill song and try to match it. That's way too high. That's close. There we go. It's nighttime now, but tomorrow morning, I'm gonna call some quail in. All right, so it's the next day out here. These quail are used, these quail are unpressured. This, it's not a hunting area. They should call back. Oh, there they are. Right up in those hills. Well, this isn't really a definitive test on whether it works or not because those birds could be calling right now just because they're calling right now and it's coincidence, but I feel like this is pretty darn close. Yeah, I can hear them. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Oh. I feel like that one is definitely calling back. It would be like definitive if is if they like came out this way. <coughs> oh yeah. Now they're all going crazy. That's so cool. They definitely quieted down. <coughs> See if I can get them riled up again. Oh, there's the quail, right there. A pair of them just landed in the neighbor's backyard. And now they're calling from up there. I think this is doing something. I like it. I feel like, I feel like bro white right now, man. I oh, hear him right out there. All right, so there you have it. So Mike will get this one as a Christmas present and hopefully we'll be using it uh, 
maybe next week. We'll see how it performs, you know, when we're actually out locating quail. <laughs>